playing around with multi-camera stuff. And let's see if I can switch to a drone video. So hopefully hopefully we're seeing video through the drone now. Um actually let's see if Shri can report to me whether we're getting that. Looks like it did switch. Hey, so we'll see how this does right now. Ah. Mm. It'll be gusty. Here's bird eyes getting ready to open. experimenting to see if we can, when we do our live broadcast later, if we can incorporate the drone footage into our Birdine's live coming back into business post Irma. been abandoned since uh, Hurricane Wilma or Charlie, and it finally fell apart in, a, in um, Irma, caved in. And you see quite a few uh, sunken boats over here. looking towards Bootkey Harbor. Some people had asked if this bridge here had caved in, but no, it's actually been like that for decades now. It's the bridge to nowhere. They just removed the center section. And then up over there is the mooring field where so many boats were lost. And a lot, this bridge after the hurricane was just covered in uh, sunken boats, and a lot of them have been hauled away now. But still quite a few over here.
I cannot see your comments, by the way, if anybody's commenting on this. And uh, sorry, there's no microphone for the wind. This is just a quick test to see how that drone broadcast is working. Um, so I'm not in front of the computer. I can't see. Sheree is, should be watching the comments. Look at all those masks on the bridge down there. Wow. It looks like they've gotten most of the boats out of this pileup hauled away. And the water is getting clear again. The water has been black. And just in the last few days, it's starting to be able to see fish, starting to be able to see the bottom in places. Let's take a look over at the mooring field. It's nice to see boats getting back on mooring balls and out of the mangroves. They've been working really hard to pull boats out, but there's still plenty of them, like that one there, sailboat ashore. Some more down here. Out there. So many boats have been cleaned up. Still a long way to go. Actually, just in the last few days, some amazing amounts of debris has been hauled away. I'm surprised at how well these trailer communities survived. There's still a lot of damage, a lot of people are homeless, but quite a few of them are doing pretty good. The surge just, just was below the Yes, probably. 
because if I'd had a headset in it, it might, might have been better. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's yeah. oh, oh goodness, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's picking up from the iPad's microphone right That's there. Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry you can't hear so well. It is a uh, fuel from that boat on the other side that's underwater. test up just because the audio is not so good. We'll use a, a live broadcast later. We'll make sure we have the set up better. But this is just an experiment. Let me come in. I could have just plugged in a headset, but they're all set up. I'm gonna I'm gonna land now. Okay. And uh Um, yeah, so I actually want to test switching back to the other okay. camera and we could carry it inside. So let me practice that. So, now let's see if I can switch this camera back to the other one. That's the real test here. YouTube. Live. Go live. Testing. Testing. I should have done this a second ago. Thank you for joining us for this quick little flight over Marathon. So did it work? I still have, I'm still on the uh, bow. Still on the bow. Okay, hopefully. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Testing. Testing. I should have done this a second ago. Okay, so now I should be able to end this. Hey, it switched. All right, yes. All right it switched. So there's, there's a quite a bit of lag, it seems. So thank you for joining us for this quick. I'm going to turn this off so that it, <laughs> we're not getting. So. This is now broadcasting over here? Yep, this is oh, broadcasting. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> cool, so um, join us at uh, 6 p.m. It's currently 3-ish, 15-ish here in Florida, so mm -hmm. in about three hours. We're going to be doing a live broadcast celebrating the grand reopening of Birdines, the uh, restaurant behind us. Um, maybe introducing you to some of the staff here that's been working extra hard to get this place recovered post-Irma. Um, but yeah, we'll take a couple minutes to do some personal Q&As because I don't know how many Q&As we're going to do this evening um, <laughs> because we'll be focused on sharing the Bird Islands experience with folks. Okay, so yeah, uh, questions and there's quite a bit of lag, so, um, and I, I did not see any commentary so far, so, but I'm uh, hoping the quality was yeah. good. That was the main test, is yes. we, this is my first time trying to broadcast in HD. Yeah, the HP people really appreciated the HD. They just don't like the wind noise. Okay. Uh -huh. we, can, we can work on that. And particularly, hopefully, the wind will calm down and the Birdines will have it. Uh -huh. If we do it with the iPad, I'll have a headset in next time. Uh, 
Um, first and question was, have we gotten any of our repairs done? So we've done some of the things that we can do on our own here yep. and make thing, things ship shape. The, the boat right now is a complete disaster here because we're mid-project on some things. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. But uh, we are currently making some uh, arrangements further up the East Coast. Yeah. Answer the question. I gotta go turn off the drone that's on the bow. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I should save the battery for later. Okay. Yeah, you can save the drone. Um, so yeah, so we're we're currently uh, just this morning we were having some phone calls with some folks up. Uh, it's looking like we might be heading towards the Fort Pierce area in the next few weeks and uh, getting the, the boat hauled out and working with some crews to affect some of the other repairs that we can't do on our own as well as proceed with some of the upgrades that we wanted to do at the same time. So. Uh, that's in progress. Uh, still no details yet, no dates planned um, or specifics. We're just starting those conversations and making touch with the people that we want to do. Um, so the uh, the drone was the DJI Mavic Pro. That's what we're using for the flying shots. That was our first time broadcasting in, in uh, 4K. And the way that works is it's controlled by our iPad, which we have over Wi-Fi, and we're streaming by, uh, I think that one was using our Verizon um, uh, Jetpack on our Verizon Unlimited data plan. So that was what was providing the uplink from there. Uh, when we switched over, we're now on our Mevo camera. That's M-E-V-O. And uh, this is one that Livestream came out with um, about a year ago that we've been using. And this one's got some really fancy features that we find more distracting than not. So we usually just keep it on a, a fixed video uh, image, but it can actually do multiple shots from one camera. Uh, we haven't really gotten great with that one yet. Um, drone's back to charging. Okay, drone's back to charging. So like I said, at 6 p.m. in about three hours or so, we're going to be doing another live cast. It'll be the official reopening of Verdine. With live music. Yes, this supposed to be a live musician. Um, they've given us permission to film up in the restaurant, and we'll be sharing it to both with their Verdine's fans. <laughs> um, Verdine's is a longtime institution here in the Keys. Apparently so. legendary. We can confirm the French fries are amazing, and a lot of people say the best French fries in the Keys, and I would think that's probably true. Other people are saying the best green chili cheeseburger they've ever had. All the food we'd had before they shut down before the storm was amazing. So uh, they're on a limited menu, but a lot of their classics are back, and we're eager to dive in. Mm -hmm. Some questions about the boats that are around. Uh, will they be removed and or crushed? So what they are working on right now, if you saw the big open field behind our marina, they've been clearing that out, and that's where the Coast Guard and Fish and Wildlife are going to be. They're currently uh, pulling boats up all on a crane around uh, the bay that you saw is flying around and um, the back yeah. <laughs> uh, so they are working on that right now pulling the boats up and they're setting up that field behind us is where they're going to be crushing them so that's going to be really sad to watch yeah once they start that yeah much. i don't know if they'll be starting by the time we're here or not but they're definitely they've done an amazing job clearing a field um to be the boat i guess because people owners who do want to claim them they will get them kind of put on blocks and then the owners can claim them and haul mm -hmm. them off somewhere else yeah, uh, so the Fish and Wildlife offering to take over the titles of boats from owners that don't have insurance or don't want to try to salvage their boats, and um, and then th those will be crushed um, at no charge to the owners, which is pretty cool. Just, I mean, not cool, yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's the best case scenario. Yeah, it's, as, as opposed <laughs> to losing your boat and getting stuck, st stuck with a bill that is probably more than the, your boat was actually worth is would just be injury to heartbreak. So mm -hmm. fortunately, the, the state is stepping in and FEMA is stepping in to dispose of these boats. Yeah. So that's all a work in progress going around here. There have been several of the towboat captains in the area that have been helping the uninsured who have boats that were semi-salvageable, helping them uh, get them floated and pulled ahead. Uh, there's a, a lady named Holly Jolly who's been doing an amazing job around here. Uh, I think she just uh, had to return to her normal work life, but she spent about a month down here helping uh, boaters out. Yeah. And another one, uh, Tom of, sorry, Bob of Towboat One has been helping a lot of boaters out. And actually yeah. our patrons, uh, we decided uh, we have a patron channel that for kind of behind the scenes access. Our patron dollars this month, we used those proceeds to fill his fuel tank the other day to help pay it forward, which yeah. is awesome to do. Because yeah, he's been, he's been towing, if you don't have, have the money, he's been towing people for free and helping them get off the mangroves, and it's a wonderful thing he's doing. It's a lot, it's great to see a lot of the community coming together down here and helping each other. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the best, best side effects of a storm is it really kind of brings out the, the good in people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And a comment that um, uh, Birdines has treated us great, yes, um, absolutely fantastic. So if you don't know the full story, the manager of Birdines is a longtime Technomadia viewer like yourselves. And uh, he happens to be the general manager here and he had uh, reached out to us when he heard we're coming down to the Keys and 
uh, made us an invitation to stop in and the whole staff here is just incredible uh, the marina got very lucky it was just, um, no nope. boat in the Burdines Marina was seriously injured. I mean, yeah. everyone has minor da minor damage, but yeah. But on the Burdines half of this inlet, nothing sunk. On the opposite side, it was really kind of tragic, and mm. we kind of learned the difference between wooden mm. pilings versus concrete pilings. And in the future, if there's a storm coming, I want to be up against wood. <laughs> yes. um, the concrete pilings, um, at least these just, hollow ones. Yeah, the concrete no, pilings so shattered and then that, turned into spears going into the bottoms of boats. Yeah, because there was a lot of big waves that came into the little basin you, if you saw from the drone footage just how this this basin is shaped they go down there and could just call a ricochet cause a ricochet down yep. there and unfortunately that most of it went that way and lifted the boats up and those concrete docks and pilings just snapped and crushed and so a lot of boats over there ended up underwater and that's very sad to see yep <sighs> so uh, we're going to go ahead. This was just an experiment to test the drone uh, with 4K video as well as switching back to this. Just 1080p. Yeah. 4, 4, 4K from the sky. Oh, That's, you lied. No, no, this is HD versus okay. 720p. So, yeah, so we, we upped the drone resolution to HD because we got a really excellent Verizon signal here. We're getting a um, 70 megabits down and 30 megabits up. So, normally when we do our live streams, we do at 720p. Um, so we're upping the resolution to 1080p. Um, why? Because, you know, why not? Yeah. And um, so this is our first first experiment with using the drone in HD live mode. The drone, when it's recording video, records in 4K, but that's way too much data to broadcast. But the drone can have two live view modes of 720p or 1080p. And this was our first experiment trying it in live 1080p. The, the other, the main reason it has the 1080p mode is if you've got the DJI goggles, it will broadcast 1080p straight to your eyeballs, um, which is pretty cool to have from a live flying camera. I mean, the technology in these things is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. And anyway, it's fun, fun geeking out. The drone's recharging, so we'll be able to to do a little bit of a, a twilight sunsetty drone shots this evening, and we'll. Yep, so yeah. So join us in about an hour and a half. We'll start broadcasting again, and that'll be the official Birdines reopening video. Uh, we're looking forward to sharing <laughs> in the excitement of this place. It has been so wonderful to us. We want to help uh, share that experience with you guys as well. Yep. So. Awesome. Okay. We'll see you Thank guys you. later. Now I should be able to end it for real instead of the <laughs> fake ending I had to do.